All right, let's move on and talk to Glenn in Colorado. Glenn, you're live with Eric and V. How's it do- How's it going? Uh, well, it's, it's doing good. How are you guys? Doing, doing really doing well. Good. What did you want to talk about today? I was uh, just going in to see if you guys have a way to determine the prob- probability of any particular guy. Sure. Yeah, I mean, that is something that we like to talk about. Um, there's, there is a, when, when I hear the probability of a god, the first thing I think of is Bayes' theorem, which is frustrating because that's been co-opted by a lot of apologists to mean like, oh, well, I did a calculation and can talk about in numerical form how probable the resurrection is or Jesus, you know, dying on the cross or whatever. And I think it's a misapplication of probability to try and assign numbers to things we cannot know and things that are unfalsifiable. But that's just me. What do you think, Eric? I I, I think that we can get rid of a whole lot of stuff with a machete pretty easily. And that is that before we can get to probability, we need to determine possibility first. If something is impossible, there's no probability for it. It doesn't even get to play. You know, it it doesn't get to be a part of the discussion because if it's impossible, then it's out. Uh, So first establish that it's possible and then look at the evidence and go, okay, here's what, you know, would, would be the case if X, you know, and then determine the probability from there. We don't really have the numbers, you know, to be able to do that in a lot of claims of you know supernatural experiences and because of that i think that people dive into wanting to talk about probability and they shouldn't they should be talking about possibility show that it's possible first and then we can talk about whether or not it's probable so uh when it comes to a lot of different god claims people will say a god is omnipotent right all powerful well there are some paradoxes there uh all powerfulness even if we did really understand what that meant, which we're granting a lot by doing that, um, it's not possible. And because of that, we can rule out probability from the start. Um, You know, a a God that is both all-knowing, all-loving, and all-powerful would be seeing all of the terrible, you know, things that happen in the world is there to stop it, can stop it and doesn't, that would negate the idea of it being all-loving. And so we just, yeah, we, we, we listen to the claim, and then we try and determine whether or not it's possible. And um, every once in a while we get into probability, but most of the time they're impossible claims. That uh, that makes a lot of sense. Should we um should we just talk about possibility instead yet? Uh, not yet. Um, now because um. I really like Bayes' theorem, so I don't want to drive V mad with it. <laughs> well, so uh, for people who don't understand the, the Bayes' theorem bit, V, do you want to give people kind of a little more inside scoop about what we're talking about? Oh, gosh. That is something that I still need to do a lot of research on. Um, the best explanation of Bayes' theorem that I've come across is... Um, I don't know if you guys know TMM, the channel TMM. Um, it's a channel where uh, this the the YouTuber behind it will go over uh, apologists' talking points and just kind of bang them out one by one, like no, 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 no. And it's very nice. And he did one about Bayes' theorem and uh, William Lane Craig, and essentially what it comes down to, or at least what William Lane Craig's version comes down to, is either there was a resurrection and Jesus rose from the dead or that it it was a lie or that didn't happen at all. And the way he calculates it using Bayes' theorem, he's like, well, the numbers prove that it's more probable that it actually did happen than it didn't happen at all. And the issue is that it becomes a, a situation with a false dichotomy, right? Where you're like either A or B when in fact, it's really a spectrum and there's a whole lot of room for movement and a whole lot more factors to consider that make that calculation pretty much useless. So you have to really become super basic um, 
with your understanding of a series of events and kind of completely ignore all the variations in order to actually run that calculation in a way that works for you if you're an apologist. Um, but, you know, that could just be William Lane Craig dumbing it down, quote unquote, for everybody who's watching. In that case, it's still useless because if it's supposed to be a method to get the average person saved and you have to dumb it yeah. down to the point where it doesn't make any sense, then that's a problem as well. <laughs> And I, 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 I want to go in a different direction with it. Mm -hmm. um, the way I've seen Bayes' theorem used by apologists, and if you're an apologist and you want to call and correct, please, now is the time. Um, I'd love to see if we've got the, the link working again. So um, tiny.cc slash call SG to talk to us online. We've got lines open right now, so call in. Uh, we want to hear from you. Uh, but the way I understand it and the way I've encountered it is Here's a bad argument, okay? Here's another bad argument, okay? And, you know, and you stack on seven bad arguments, and even if any of them, if any of them have any value at all, if any of them are convincing at all, then in the aggregate built together, it's more convincing. And so they point to, they'll say, oh, well, you know, there are, you know, 10,000 miracle claims, even if, you know, a fraction of those were true, then... The fact that it's it's not zero, they, they add together, and, and it makes it far more likely that that God exists. Um, and I think that's crap. I think 10 crap arguments are just as bad as one crap argument, you know? And if you want to use math to try and make yourself sound smart about it, okay, um, call in, we can talk about it. But I, it, it's a house of cards, I think, that if you're relying on a bunch of bad arguments to support your claim, uh, it, you know, you're only as strong as your weakest link there. And right. they're all pretty weak links. So, yeah. Glenn, can you hear us? Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, um, did you have any other questions before we moved on to the next caller? Uh, yeah, kind yeah. of. It's Glenn? And we're having trouble here in Glenn. Um, That's so strange. Yeah, Glenn, uh, thank you for calling in. Uh, we'll go ahead and drop the call. And That's okay. Um, <laughs> thank you for calling. Uh, let's move on to the next. I know that we have a lot of open space, but that is okay. Oh. Oh, no. That wasn't a good sound. No, that was not good at all. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're going to need to do that thing that where, we... Where, where V vamps. Where V vamps and where V <laughs> where, where Eric uh, calls in and reconnects us. So it's going to get a little bit loud. Uh, please be patient. We're going to do our absolute best. Um, do you want to... Oh, there's probably no way to mute without muting me as well. Um, so fun story. Uh, Ken Ham actually tweeted about our protest this morning. Yeah. And apparently somebody was there taking pictures. So either somebody sent them our photos or they had somebody there taking pictures of us undercover, um, yeah. which is kind of creepy. Um, but it says a group of 50 atheists. 50 atheists. That's a lot. There was a lot of us. I mean, for the weather that we had that day, like, that was that's a lot of people. A lot of people showed up. A group of 50 atheists associated with a local atheist group, tri-state free thinkers, Ken, that's who you're thinking of, conducted their annual protest against the Ark Encounter on Saturday, while 7,700 people visited the Ark and over 10,000 total at Ark and Creation Museum the same day. Thank you for calling, I feel like that's a very weird way to admit that the Creation Museum is not very popular. <laughs> I, I mean, if, if you're saying that your amusement park got more people than protesters. I mean... Uh, okay. Yeah. One of the items they claim they're protesting is that the Ark only employs Christians who sign our statement of faith. And then in parentheses, he says, as a federal court ruled, we could in accord with the 1964 Civil Rights Act and freedom of religion. Okay. See, the issue there is that they can totally do that as a church, right? 
but they're also getting government funding as a business. So that's the tricky part right yeah. there. So yes, okay, if you are a church, you absolutely can determine who gets employed by that organization due to the freedom of religion, right? But if you are a business and you are getting federal dollars to subsidize that business, that's when it becomes an issue. So not a lot of truth here from Ken Ham. Shocker. Yeah. And also if you are getting, you know, tons and tons of tax credits, that counts as well. Just because you didn't get it as cash doesn't mean that you're, you're not receiving that funding and support. So, no. No. 